Hey guys and girls, welcome back to Storm King Expedition. I'm John, thanks for tuning in. I'm headed out on a trip here for section two of the Northeast BDR. So for those of you who may be joining for the first time, please uh, take a moment to check out episode one, section one of the Northeast Backcountry Discovery Route. And uh, today I'm handed, headed back to Andes, New York, where I'm going to start section two. So I'm with Scout. Scout's riding in the shotgun right now. She's comfortable and, uh, well, she's getting anxious. It looks like she's about ready to jump out of And I wanted to start off by acknowledging one thing. I got a couple of comments from a few of you after I finished up and posted section one of the trip, where I had a crossing early in the morning. And the trail was blocked and I had to take some additional measures to get through that area. Again, I just want to throw a quick clip in here for those of you who left those comments. I followed up with a promise to do this. So as you can see, some work needed to be done from a trail maintenance standpoint, and I went back and took care of that. So for those of you who took the time to give me a little nudge and say, hey John, do the right thing, I did, and I appreciate those comments. For those of you who do leave comments, once again, thumbs up. I like that. I hope you do too. So uh, I always try to return every single comment and I appreciate all the feedback. Um, we are enjoying this journey together. So when you do that, I hope they get back to you. For those of you who are watching for the first time, the second time, or whatever time, if you have not already liked or subscribed or checked out some of my other episodes, please do so. I really enjoy making this content. And most importantly, it's just a nice reminder to me that I'm not making this just for myself. As much as I'm enjoying it, I hope you are as well. So on my way to Andy's, hope you enjoy the ride. So uh, I'm on Route 28 right now, and I'm just arriving in Andes, New York, end of Section 1, and also the beginning of Section 2. Andes, New York is located about 150 miles northwest of New York City, or about a three-hour car drive. It sits in the middle of the Catskill Mountains. Andes was established in 1819 and was named after four English immigrants of mainly Irish descent who founded one of the first grain trading organizations in America. In 1845, Andes hit the map with their anti-rent wars in which protesters dressed as Calicoon Indians shot and killed the local undersheriff. Today, Andes is just a small little town with lots of visitors in the summer, mostly coming from New York City. So as I return for section two, I have entered Andes from the west along State Route 28. As I leave town, I will be passing the route in which I originally arrived from section two coming from the west. If you have not already, be sure to take some time to utilize the resources of the Ride BDR site. I have taken advantage of downloading their GPS tracks to use with my Onyx mapping for this trip. I would also like to give a big thank you to the team over at Backcountry Discovery Routes for all their hard work in creating these routes. If you are not already aware, Backcountry Discovery Routes is a nonprofit advocacy organization that creates off highway routes for dual sport and adventure motorcycle travel. Their work includes rider education, safety campaigns, and promoting responsible travel for motorcyclists traveling in the backcountry. Their volunteer powered organization works with agencies and land managers to keep trails and remote roads open for motorcycling and helps us as well in the four wheel community. Each route generates new tourism that delivers sustainable economic relief to less advantaged rural communities. This creates local stakeholders who will help fight to keep access for dual sport and adventure motorcycles in these incredible backcountry areas. I also would like to acknowledge another comment that I received from a viewer which I believe may be a fair one. Essentially the comment made the point that four-wheelers don't have the same respect for these spaces as the two-wheel community. 
I will simply say that we all have a portion of our communities that are not doing the right thing. So let's all make the extra effort to pick up after those who don't see the big picture of what these spaces mean to all of us. So for those of you traveling on four wheels, please keep in mind that we must also do our part. Throughout this trip, I left every spot that I visited a little better than I found it. I would encourage all of us to bring along a couple of extra trash bags and fill them as you go. We can have a greater impact by carrying out more on four wheels than our brothers and sisters on two. So as I leave Andes on this Monday in March, Copake Falls, New York, and the end of Section 2 is about 195 miles away. I know that with the time around 1 o'clock, I will be able to only cover about 50 miles before I begin to lose daylight. My goal is to get to my planned camp spot on state land just about 50 miles away outside of Prattville, New York. I hope to arrive before dark, and one thing that I learned from doing Section 1 is that the pace of two wheels across these trails is almost twice as fast as on four. After what was truly a stunningly beautiful day, it was nice to have temperature starting to show signs of spring soon to come. Along with watching the snow slowly disappear along the mountaintops, I was thrilled to be sitting by the fire at my camp for the night. I, along with Scout, enjoyed a little dinner, along with many sounds of owls and other animals in the woods. Scout was not a fan, but I enjoyed watching her face throughout the night. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Well, it is about 6 a.m. And, uh, I don't know if you can see Scout here. The sun is starting to come up out that way. <laughs> you can hear uh, some waterfalls off in the distance. So this mountain right here up to my right, we're, we're sitting along a ridge that wraps around. And most of the water that you can hear 
is coming from over that way. Um, we are in Prattville, New York, and this is uh, Steedland. And uh, it ended up being a really good spot last night. Some really nice cover. I, I always like having some evergreen trees. And uh, it was a pretty good spot last night. But overall, you know, first time at any campsite, trying to feel things out. What works, what doesn't. Had a small fire here last night. And uh, it was good. It was nice. Good spot. I'm going to start packing up the tent. I'm going to do a little hike. I want to check out this trail this morning. Maybe we'll get the drone up and catch that sunrise as well. Sit. Good girl. Alright, so it's the beginning of day two and I'm headed out onto the trails here to continue along section two. I'm on probably about 15, 20 miles west of Sagardes, New York, and I'm headed towards Catskill. I'm in an area called Prattville, uh, spent the night here, and I'm headed back out onto the trail. So, should be a good day. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know if you can tell, but the rain has started. And today is supposed to be a rainy day, pretty much from 7 a.m. until 5 p.m. So, uh, you know, other than the fact that maybe I could use a little bit of a car wash, uh, <laughs> it's not gonna really matter much. Uh, so, we'll see how it goes. I'll keep you updated as we go along the trails, but we're expecting a good day today. Scout's ready to go. Ready to go, Scout? You want to run all day, don't you? Scout wants to run all day. She's disappointed that she's got to sit back in the passenger seat, but uh, I think she had a good morning. She got a plenty of chance to run around. You know, every once in a while you come across things in the middle of the woods that, well, for 
sure intrigues me because of the colors to start off, but Chevy pickup, I'm guessing. What do we got here? This one. I love these old vans. Scooby-Doo style. Hmm. I think this is a Ford van. I'm pretty sure this is a Ford van. I knew what this I'm pretty sure this is a Ford. I'm like 99% certain that this is a Chevy. This has got to be a Chevy. And a pile of cement. And an oven. We need an oven. Some of these things are just so weird. You find two cars in the woods and you don't know how they got there. But as I left, I was wondering to myself still, Ford, Chevy, Ford, Ford, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Hey guys and girls. Well, listen, uh, I'm on my second day here on section two and uh, you could probably hear in the background the sound of the wipers because the rain continues to come down. Uh, it's about 12 o'clock in the afternoon. I got a, about a 7.15 start today on the road. And um, to be honest, it's just been a miserable day. Don't get me wrong. Um, not that it's not a whole lot of fun driving through some trails with water puddles splashing everywhere. Um, but the reality is, is it just kind of takes away a little bit from uh, some of the sites that you will find along these trails. So I'm doing my best here to try to share as much as I can with you. Um, last night was a last night was a good night actually. I was surprised, you know, kind of in this camping spot, which I was not really too sure about. It ended up being a really good night. Got a nice fire going, had some dinner, a little bit of pasta sausage with uh, green squash and a little Parmesan cheese on top, and that was excellent. And then played ball with Scout for a little while um, in the middle of the night with a headlamp on, just throwing the ball to her, and you know, trying to get her to settle down a little bit after a long day of sitting in the passenger seat needless to say having a whole lot of energy pent up that she uh, wants to get rid of so we had a good night um slept fairly well temperatures last night i believe were probably in the mid 40s but overall great night's sleep got up this morning around 5 30 uh got out caught the sunrise before the rain came in around seven and uh overall it's been a really good day uh, currently, I sit probably somewhere in the area, about 15, 20 miles west of Catskill, New York. 
And now I'm headed hopefully uh, down east towards uh, the Hudson River and crossing over to the east side of the Hudson River. So we'll see how much longer that takes. And uh, hopefully the weather forecast holds true. It's supposed to stop raining sometime around 5.30, 6 p.m. Unfortunately, that's the same time that the sun's scheduled to set. So we'll see. See how things go. So as I left Hunter Mountain, heading east along Route 23A, I was doing my best to safely travel through the rain and fog. That being said, this section is one of my favorite paved roads in New York State. The video footage you see here is not from this trip, but was actually part of my Catskill series. Because of the conditions, I was not able to stop at one of the area's most beautiful destinations, Catterskill Falls. The fog simply made it impossible to see the falls as they dropped 260 feet. While passing through this section, I would encourage you to take the time to pull to the side of the road occasionally to take in the views because there are many waterfalls and spots for overlooks as you pass through this amazing section of the Catskills. As you cross the Hudson River to the east, be sure to look up and also visit the historic Olana Mansion. A quick ride to the top of the mountain is free and the views of the stunningly unique mansion will also give you a chance to catch a beautiful view westward and say goodbye to the Catskill Mountains. Hey folks, I'm on the eastern side of the Hudson River and I'm probably somewhere in the area of about 10-15 miles from the end of the, the entire Section 2 route. But I came down to this one spot here you can see behind me. The one thing is, uh, it is closed. There's a bridge behind me that has been partially washed out and collapsed. So you're not going to be able to pass through this way and please do not attempt to do that. And by the way, this is all taking place right now. This is the first week of March. I don't anticipate this being fixed anytime during 2024. So just keep that in mind. Hey, just a quick note here. As you're coming down Manor Rock Road here where this split is to the left and the right, whether you're on two wheels or four wheels, just stay to the right on Craryville Road down to Route 11 and then make a left and then go up uh, to the next right and make a right. You're, you're not missing anything through this section and it's really not worth going through this uh, closed road section whether you're on two wheels or four wheels. Just follow this alternative route until they do fix the bridge. After about 300 miles of paved and unpaved road as well as some good old fashioned rock and dirt trails, I had arrived in Copake Falls. Now having completed both Section 1 as well as Section 2 of the Northeast BDR, I took some time to walk around Copake Ironworks. 
Although this seemed like the end of something, it was only the beginning of section three. Before I took that next step, I took time to look back on my journey and get to know a little bit about the history of this old ironworks furnace and what was a small working town back in the late 1800s. If you've enjoyed watching this, please consider liking and subscribing and checking out some of my other videos. I do appreciate it, and for all of you who have been watching many of my videos, thank you again. Thank you.